now I'm going to break down the USMLE path and like basically how it works. The only way to become a doctor in the US, and, uh, and I think the confusion here comes from how everything is set up in other countries where if you do med school, you can practice as a physician. In the US, the only way to become a doctor is residency, residency, residency. The only way to go through residency and become a doctor is United States medical licensing exam for every single one. Any company who says that they can make you a doctor in the US without the USMLE is probably scamming you. And just please know there's no other way as a doctor, even for American grads, they all have to do USMLE, American people, any other people, you have to do this exam because without these boards or something called as the USMLE, you are not allowed to go into residency. So what is the USMLE pathway like? First part is something called a step one. Then you do this exam called step two. Third exam right now is occupational English test, which is basically testing your English in a medical setting basically how would you communicate with patients it's an easy exam not not that hard after that you can apply for something called as ecfmg graduation ecfmg stands for educational council of foreign medical graduation what that does is is after you give these three exams one two and three they say that you're equivalent to an american graduate because if you have passed the three exams that basically is saying the same because american grads also have to do the same thing so your knowledge is basically equivalent and that makes you eligible to apply for something called as the match in the us what happens is after getting this ecfmg certification and the scores you make this thing called the cb which is like a dating profile like if you have ever used a dating app or anything like that like jeevansathi.com or anything like that you make this dating profile where you're saying hey here's my step one score here's my step two score here's how i did in medical school so it has data from your medical school how you did in medical school it has all your rotations so you'll do some rotations in the us and you have letters from the us doctors about how you were actually as a doctor or as a student physician there so you're making this dating profile that you do and then the residency program so let's say you're applying to internal medicine there are 300 to 400 residency programs in the u.s they make their own dating profiles so where they state hey here's what i have to offer like it's a three-year residency where we give you cutting edge care we have the, this research going on we have this facility here's how the call schedule is amazing for you so everybody's different right so here's the applicants with dating profiles here's the programs where like all programs are different for specialty. So internal medicine, you might have 300 programs. Psychiatry, you might have 200 programs, right? So if you're an internal medicine applicant, you're applying to internal medicine programs, you are one applicant, there are 300 programs and all of you have dating profiles. So you enter this thing called as the match, which I think of as the equivalent to Tinder or equivalent to any dating app where you basically start swiping on each other, whether you like them or not. And if you like each other, that ends up into an interview or if you think of it as in the dating terminology, a date, right? Where you guys go out, talk to each other, evaluate if they, you are the right fit, and then you decide to continue if it's worth it or not. So that's the simplest version of how the match looks like. So you will apply, you will pay for uh, the application process. You will start interviewing. So let's say I apply to 300 programs, right? I, they look at my dating profile. 10 of them are like, Manik looks like a good match for me, a good fit for me. Let's send him an interview, aka a date. Let's say I get 10 interviews from programs and I start interviewing with them. And what we do is something called as the rank order list. And I'll get into what that is. And then it's decided whether you will get into residency or not. So USMLE step one, when should you give it? Most American med students give it at the end of second year because it's basically testing your preclinical subjects, which is first year and second year subjects. In India and in other countries, international medical graduates can give it anytime after second year. It's basically consisted of 280 MCQ questions in eight hours. So seven hours is the total test time plus one hour break. So you're doing 40 questions per hour. So one block or one hour is 40 questions. It was previously scored. However, it has transitioned to a pass fail exam where if you score above a certain limit you will pass or fail they won't tell you the marks so everybody is now equivalent no negative marking so you can attempt as many as questions as you like without fear of lowering your score and six to eight months is generally the preparation time most students take for USMLE step one step two is an exam which tests your clinical knowledge and therefore is given by american med students in first part of their fourth year in india it's generally after fourth year that you can give in so internship or post internship it covers clinical subjects makes sense right 
because you've done your clinical uh, subjects and they're testing you on that. 320 MCQ questions, so it's 40 more than step one. And that's why it's one hour more, so nine hours. That's broken down into eight hours plus one hour break. It is a scored exam. So the score that you get on it does determine your competitiveness or your attractiveness on that dating profile or, you know, the match that we were talking about. The higher the score, the more attractive you are to the programs because that means you have good knowledge. There's no negative marking here and it takes about six months preparation for this. OET is something called as occupational English test. You should take it within two years of applying for the match. And it's basically testing your English skills. It's a very easy exam, actually. It tests four parts, reading, writing, speaking, and listening. It's a three-hour written exam plus 20 minutes speaking part. So you are basically giving 3.3 hours. If you think about it in that terminology for this exam, you need at least 350, which is pretty achievable. I was able to do this within a week of preparation. So 350 in all parts, except speaking where 300 is at least needed. When I took it, it was paper-based. Now they have translated this to an electronic computer exam. So you can take it either on computer or paper based and you maximum need one month of preparation. You can take it as many as times you need. Even if you fail, it doesn't matter. For ECFMG certification, what that means is you're equivalent to an American medical graduate in terms of your basic and clinical knowledge. You need three exams for this, step one, step two, and OAT, and after that, you can apply for it. And that basically says, hey, you can uh, take part in the match or this dating game that we are playing. What is the match application? A match application is simplistically like your dating profile. Before we dive into like the match application, what is the match? It is a process wherein medical students and graduates apply in a particular specialty. So internal medicine, if you're an internal medicine applicant to a certain number of residency programs for an interview. If a residency program likes your application, you get that interview. The more competitive your application, meaning the better your step two score, if you've done research, if you've done electives in the US. So you have been trained by US doctors where you did some rotations hands on and you learned about the American system. That also makes you attractive. Your volunteer experiences, what else have you done in life? So it's not just one exam that will determine your life. It's the sum of what you have done in life that matters. So it's more of a holistic view. So when you make your dating profile, which is your match application, if it's competitive, the more interviews you get in that specialty. So if you're in internal medicine, you have gotten great scores, you have research, you have electives, you get more interviews because of that because you're more attractive to them and you get more chances of matching. So match process starts, you fill this application. The deadline is September 29th. After that, like you start getting interviews. And once that's over, what you do is this thing called the rank order list. What the rank order list means is, let's say you interviewed with 10 programs and let's say one of those programs interviewed 50 applicants. This is just like the dating game that we are playing. So you saw 10 people and you're like, out of these 10 people, this is my number one, this is my number two, number three. If number one doesn't work out, I'll take number two. If number two doesn't work out, I'll take number three and so on till 10, right? For them, it's the same. They interviewed 50 applicants and they're like, hey, this is the most attractive for me, number one, right? I want to take this person. That This is the number one person for me. And they go make that list till number 50 based upon their attractiveness to you. So you both are making your own rank order list and then you submit it into this algorithm called the match algorithm where it looks at your list and their list and matches you accordingly. And it prefers you over the residency program. So if you have ranked somebody higher and they, they see that there is a spot in that program, right? Let's say you rank some, somebody number one. However, they ranked you number seven and they have 10 spots. So you have a chance of matching there because like let's say the first six spots are like go, going to go away right you have a hundred percent chance of matching there if they have 10 spots because you will take the seventh spot right however if you rank, rank them number one and they rank you number 50 or number 40 you don't have a chance of matching there so what will happen is that one will go away and the second uh, choice that you had in internal medicine will take preference and they, so basically that's how the algorithm works and once they look at the rank order list both both yours and the program's rank order list are pitted against each other in march they announce the results of whether you match or not so what is the match application your era your exam scores your letter of recommendations which is from rotations in the us your personal statement about like you basically need to write about what inspired you to come to this specialty your medical school performance evaluation how do, has your medical school performance been what do your professor say about you your medical school transcript which is basically how did you score in medical school mspe and medical school transcript are not that important for imgs it's more of importance for amgs or american medical graduates they consider scores for us as and, and lors for us 
as more important than this because it's not actually transferable to the american system it's not just that they don't trust it it's hard to translate it because it's a different system in the us sixth is basically your experiences uh, and i've already told you the application to draft this is by the end of september for that year during the math season it's a five month period after september for example right now we are going through something called as the match 2024 what that means is like the result for that will be announced in the march of 2024 however the match 2024 application process has begun this year so in september they basically made their application september 29 was a deadline and then it was released to the programs and then we entered this five month period for match 2024 right now we are going through that and the results will be announced in march so you interview from the end of september to february and you get interviews and let's say if you are a competitive applicant you can, the, the more competitive you are the, the more interviews you get and the more you can interview with programs the higher chances you have at matching then you make a rank order list you make your own list the program makes you their own list after the interviews are over and based upon that the match algorithm decides by the end of february where you will match but the results are announced on the second monday of march about whether you matched or not so for match 2024 that will be announced in march 2024 five days from when the match results are announced so second friday of march they tell you where you match so second monday of march is whether you match or not yes or no and second friday of march is when they tell you wh- where in all of the us the programs that you interviewed did you match Uh, many uh, students ask why is there five day gap between telling you whether you matched or not and where you matched or not the reason is because if you go unmatched when you find out like on march let's say you go unmatched you go through this process called as soap or supplemental offer and acceptance program so if you go unmatched and let's say the program also might have some spots where they weren't able to fill the spots because nobody tinder didn't work out so you go to bumble or hinge and hope that it will work out with someone so that's basically the equivalent of what is soap and where you are putting your match application they are putting their spots and then you interview with them and see if you can match or not so it's more like a second chance if you couldn't find what you wanted in the first chance which was the match competitive applications what makes you attractive in the match and what increases the chances of you finding your program in that specialty or let's say if you want to go to a competitive specialty like general surgery or dermatology which is very competitive you need a more competitive application for those specialties if you want to apply to internal medicine let's say you want to go to stanford or a big programs like harvard you need a more competitive application to apply for a more competitive program within the specialty so what makes a competitive application is your score on step 2 which is important because that shows your clinical knowledge you assembly attempts if you failed a you assembly exam that does cause concern in many pds and that can hamper your chances of matching so make sure if you take your you assemblies you are well prepared because having an attempt is like very hard to bypass and it's very hard to match if you have an attempt in the usmre however that's not true for oet if you fail oet nobody cares you can take it as many as number of times nobody knows about it a number of us clinical experiences so when you do your rotations in the us what matters is where you did it so was it in patient or was it out patient was it in a hospital setting where you were actually working with attending staff or was it in a clinical setting which is not as robust because like the patients aren't as acute number one number two the emrs aren't as nice third it's not the same quality of care that you deliver in the hospital compared to a clinic so in patient trumps out patient then hands on trumps hands off what does hands on mean hands on means you're allowed to touch the patient like physical examination you're allowed to talk to the patient you're allowed to participate in the clinical care of the patient so you're allowed to interact with the team and the patient itself and then form a treatment plan hands off means you're only allowed to be with the doctor and do nothing else just see the doctor you can't speak you can't talk to the patient you can discuss with the doctors about what you think but that doesn't make a big impact so you're not allowed to participate in clinical care what you are allowed to do is just observe it's also called as an observership and it doesn't have much value the quality of your clinical experience determines your letter of recommendation so for example if you did an hands off outpatient experience here that makes for a poor letter of recommendation because you did nothing you just saw me doing stuff with the patients in an outpatient setting where it, there wasn't a robust care and they get poor lors which significantly hampers their chances of matching because you did nothing there right versus if you do a hands on inpatient rotation so this is what i did where i actually applied to hospitals and got that in inpatient settings and that made for great lors and everybody i was interviewing with was like wow Uh, we love your lors one of them actually read it out to me and how impressed he was with my rotations it does make a difference your strength of cv basically where did you go to med school sometimes does matter 
we are work experience matters work experience also encompasses us clinical experience have you done a pg degree sometimes that also help research experience research experience is like have you participated in research meaning like in a research team in the us or remote research volunteer experience is any experience that you did without getting money for it so just out of the good of your heart for example participating in peace corps or participating in let's say a aids camp where you're helping patients getting medications or polio camp research is your publications basically you publishing case reports or any other kind of case series also matters if you presented a posture that means you're interested in furthering medicine in the future right us assembly step 3 also matters interview skills so when you interview with them how good are you in talking a good game about yourself selling yourself matters in the us if you have great scores but you can't say anything you don't know how to communicate nobody wants you because they don't want a lawsuit on their head let's say you are an excellent clinician but you cannot translate that into clinical care because you can't talk properly to the patient you will get somebody into legal trouble and they do not want that they want a doctor who can communicate well uh, in english and knows the subtlety of the language and how to communicate one fact in a softer way uh, than giving it the harder way so they do care about that and the interview determines that